Thank you once again for tuning in to another Sunday morning broadcast. This is for Sunday, uh, December the 20th uh, broadcast. And we're so thankful that you're tuned in. As always, we want to continue to pray for all of our number who are sick and shut in. We pray for those who are dealing with COVID-19. Thank God for those who have been brought back uh, to a, a recovery. And we're so thankful to God that there's a vaccine on the horizon to uh, give us some relief from this uh, dreaded condition that we're dealing with in our world today. We also want to uh, thank all those who may not be members that tune in to our broadcast. We're so appreciative for you tuning in, and we'd love for you to come out and be with us. Uh, each Sunday morning, we're here at 9 a.m. Uh, with a drive-in worship service. We have a worship service every Sunday morning here in the parking lot, uh, all uh, uh, socially distanced and everything that uh, the CDC requires, and we are worshiping and serving God in spirit and in truth. So we'd love for you to come out and be with us at each Sunday morning, 9 a.m. here at the building in the parking lot each Sunday morning. On last week, lesson, we took a text from Ecclesiastes, the chapter is 3 and verse number 11 where Solomon lets us know that God makes everything beautiful in its time. And we had a subtopic of that's just the way it is. Now we want to continue to look at that lesson here on this morning. And we want to look at that further. And on last week, we concluded with Job understanding that he had to wait, or he had to patiently endure, Job 14, 14, until his change or his transition would come when he was in his season. So now, Job was in a season of suffering. We talked about God had a purpose for that season, and that purpose was to let Satan know that God had a man on earth, a human being, that served him not just for what God gave him materially, but he was a genuine worshiper of the God of heaven. Now here's what we need to understand. We can't control everything that's going on around us. We just don't have that kind of power. We don't have that kind of control. But what we can control is what happens on the inside. I love fishing. And when you're in a boat and you're out there fishing, as long as you're in a good boat, you're fine. The water that you're looking at and that you're fishing in is no danger to you as long as you're in this boat. Now the problem comes in, and where the danger comes in, if that water on the outside starts coming into the boat. Now I'm making an analogy. What is your point, preacher? What's going on in our season outside is not the most dangerous thing. The most dangerous thing is what's going on on the inside. That's what got Job through in his season. All of these things happened. His sons were taken. His livestock was taken. His health was taken. But all that was happening externally, but here, he's going to wait until his change comes. He, he says another season. A season has to come. You can't control what's going on on the outside. You've got to control the way you think in adverse seasons. The proverb writer puts it this way in Proverbs 4 and verse number 23. He says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of Life. What is he saying? 
you've got to guard your mind because that's where the thinking is and where the thinking is or calls you to do things either in a congruence with the will of God or out of congruence with the will of God, irregardless to what's going on in the season around you, you have to guard your heart. Now here's another point that we want to make. God's plans does not change because the seasons change. I'm going to say that again. God's plans for me and you does not change because the seasons change. Everything is going to be beautiful in its time. And that's just the way it is when we have to deal with these seasons. Notice this. God's plans don't change for me because my season changes. I want to give you a biblical example. I want you to go with me to the book of Genesis. The chapter is 50. Genesis, the 50th chapter. And let's listen to the great patriarch, Joseph. Everything is over now. His brothers know who he is. Everybody's down in Egypt now, according to God's plan. But I want you to notice what happened. He didn't understand it all from the beginning. But there's one thing about Joseph's life is God's plans didn't change for Joseph just because the seasons in his life changed. Well, let me give you a perfect example. In Genesis chapter 50, in verse number 20, he tells his brothers, he said, uh, but as for you, the thing they had done to him, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring the past as it is this day to save much people alive. Now here's the deal. To everything, there's a time and a purpose for every season that's under heaven. Why did all this happen to Joseph? Why does he deal with all these seasons? Because God's purpose was to save his chosen people's generation through this man, Joseph. And he went through seasons in order to get to be where he was. Watch this, my friend. God had plans for Joseph to be the ruler in Egypt. But guess what? In God's plan for Joseph to be a ruler in Egypt, Joseph first had to be ruled before he was able to rule over somebody. That was God's purpose for Joseph. Notice, if you will, look at the seasons that Job. Uh, that Joshua, uh, Joseph went through in his life. Watch the season that he went through. Number one, we find him and his brothers had thrown him in a pit. Well, the oldest brother figured out, that, look, we don't need to kill him. So they sold him to the Ishmaelites and he finds himself down in Egypt. So he, he goes from the pit one season down into Egypt, another country, and now he's in another season. Then he finds himself in Potiphar's house, and Potiphar's wife lies on Joseph because she wants to sleep with the young man. And now he finds himself from the pit, and now he's put into prison. 
But God's plans for Joseph hadn't, hadn't changed from when he was in the pit or when he was in prison. He was going through another season, but God's plans, his purpose, had not changed for Joseph. And guess what? Then he finds himself in the palace. He becomes second ruler in Egypt behind the Pharaoh. So guess what? From the pit to prison to the palace, God was with him in the pit. God was with him in prison because God's purpose was to get him in the palace to save much people alive. And guess what? He went through some adverse seasons in his life. Pits, prison, palace, purpose. Seasons for purpose. You and I go through seasons for purpose. We don't know the works of God from beginning to end. Sometimes we wait to have to find out after it's all over. And even in the life of Job, God still hadn't told Job why he went through those seasons. He doesn't have to tell us. We don't know the works of God from beginning to end, but he has a purpose for every season that we go through on the heaven. I want you to notice this. So remember, friend, God's plans don't change because the seasons do. We have to be steady and consistent and faithful in every season. Timothy was a young preacher. And Paul told him something. I want you to turn me to 2 Timothy. The chapter is 4. 2 Timothy, the chapter is 4, beginning at verse number 1. Paul says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn their ears from the truth, and shall turn on the fables. What did Paul tell Timothy? He said, Timothy, people go through seasons. You're going to go through seasons as a minister. And what I want you to understand is that there are going to be some good seasons in church life and ministry, and there's going to be some hardships. That's just the way it is. But what you've got to do in every season, you've got to constantly and consistently and faithfully preach the word when they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it. Be instant in season when they want to hear it and out of season when they don't want to hear it. The word of God does not change and it has to be preached in every season. We have seasons that change with people every day 
in our society. They want to change and make the season be the way they want it to be. They want to have the lifestyle that they want to have, and they want it to be that. And they don't want anybody to say anything about the season that they're in. But Paul told Timothy, I want you to preach the word in season and out of season. And here's what we got to understand. It's just the way it is. Wherever there are people... There are going to be problems. You can expect that. That's just the way it is. People are seasonal. They go through changes in their life. It's just like young people. They go from you putting diapers on them and giving them a bottle to crawling, to walking, to getting in elementary, to junior high in high school and then they become young adults and they want to think for themselves. They want to do everything their way. Their seasons change but God's word says they still have to be reared the same way. Preach the word in season and out of season. The next point my friend. God is at work in every season. There will be fruitful seasons and there will be unfruitful seasons. The farmers that didn't have a good year this past year, that's not going to stop him from planting next year because he knows that every season is not going to be the same. He doesn't quit farming because he had a bad season this year. We don't quit God because a season comes in our lives. We keep planting. Seasons are going to change. Back in Ecclesiastes 3.11, he says that God has set the world in their heart. Now, the, the Hebrew word here for world is eternity. God has set eternity in our hearts. Now, why, why has God done that? God's purpose is to prepare us for eternity, for us to conform to the image of Christ. And we have to understand that. And we have to understand that so that we are not going to have the concept that every season in our life is going to be easy. We don't always have easy seasons. I want you to go with me to the psalmist. In Psalm, the first chapter, very familiar passage of scripture. Let's read verses 1 through 3. Someone Verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. On his law doth he meditate day and night. Notice verse 3. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of waters. Now he's giving us a physical illustration of a spiritual concept. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water. Get this, that bringeth forth fruit in his season, and his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Guess what he says? He said it bringeth forth fruit in his season. What does that mean? There's a time for that tree to bring forth fruit in its season. Every season is not going to be fruitful for that tree because it's not its season. Every day, 
every year of our lives is not going to be a bed of roses. Why? Because God has so designed that we go through seasons. And we learn to trust God when we go through seasons. Now, what is the deal? What do we learn in our seasons? Joseph learned what God's plans were. Out of all those seasons he went through, he said, you know, I went through all that, and God's plan for me in all those seasons was to save his people. We don't always know why we go through a season. We may learn later by and by. We may not learn until we stand in the judgment before God. Esther. She learned what God's plans were. Her uncle Mordecai told her in Esther 4 and 4. How do you know? Well, you Don't you know that you're in the kingdom for such a time as this? You are the one now. It is your season, and you need to do what God has put you here for. You are down here in captivity, but your season is here now for you to save all of the Jews. We have to learn something from our season. My friend, God is with you in it, the season, and God will bring you through the season, and everything is beautiful in its time. That's just the way it is. I want you to go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 1. Now, Let's look at these verses now that we've been through this lesson. Verse 1, to everything there's a season and a time and a purpose under heaven. That's a time to be born. That's a season. And there's a time to die. That's a season. A time to plant. A time to pluck up that which is planted. Time to kill. Time to heal. Time to break down that which is built up. Time to weep, time to mourn, time to mourn, a time to dance, time to cast away stones, a time to gather stone together, time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, time to get, time to lose, time to keep, time to cast away, time to rent, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, time to speak, time to love, and a time to hate, time to war, time of peace. What's the deal, Solomon? What profit had he that worketh in wherein he laboreth? Verse 10. I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set the world, or eternity in their heart, that no man can find the work of God from beginning to the end. Everything is beautiful in his time. There is to everything there's a season, and there is a time and a purpose for everything under heaven. And everything is beautiful in its season or its time. And that's just the way that it is. That's the God in which we serve. And friend, it's high time now for us to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ is always season for us to be saved and to remember that we are saved and to turn back to the wheel in the ways of God. Paul reminded Ephesians in Ephesians 2.5, he said, Wherefore remember 
that ye be in times past in the flesh were uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, that at that time you were without Christ. You may be in a season right now, friend, where you're without Christ. You're not saved. The Jews were like that at one time. I mean, these Gentiles were like that at one time. But they got into Christ Jesus. And now is the accepted time. Now is the season for you to be saved. How can you be saved? By hearing the gospel, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, believing it with all of your heart, repenting of your sin, confessing Christ as the Son of God, and being baptized for the remission of sin, and the Lord will add you to the church. Live faithfully unto death, and God will give you a crown of life. Now is the accepted time. Now is the season for you to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you will have adverse seasons in your life, but God will be with you in it, bring you through it, and there's a purpose for everything under heaven, and everything is beautiful in its time. That's just the way it is. Let us commemorate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Matthew 26 and 26, the Lord instituted this supper. Matthew 26, 26, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Let's give thanks for the bread. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this emblem, the bread which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're so thankful for this sacrificial, perfect body, perfect man that you sent into a dying and sinful world for our sin. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sin. But I say unto you that I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine. Until that day I drink it with you new in my Father's kingdom. Let us give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, fruit of the vine, which represents the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. For we realize that without the shedding of his blood, there will be no remission of sin. And we thank you for the reconciling power of his blood. In his name we do pray. And ask it all. Amen. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out on the Mount of Olives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the seasons in our lives. For we know that there is a purpose for all of our seasons. And we thank you so much, dear God, for all the great men and women that we can read about in your Holy Bible and realize that you will bring us through our seasons. We thank you so much, dear God, that everything is beautiful in its time. We ask these and other blessings in Jesus' name.